in the good old days, back when I was a kid, the big evil multinationals used to shift income to tax haven subsidiaries and then loan it back to the U.S. parent. They didn't pay U.S. tax on the income till they formally declared a dividend, which might be never. The subsidiaries were referred to as foreign base companies because they had very little substance. That was pretty much halted in 1962 with subpart F, the key anti-deferral provision. Subpart F makes U.S. shareholders of controlled foreign corporations recognize portable income of the CFC as the CFC earns it. It also makes those U.S. shareholders recognize income if it is loaned back to a related U.S. person or used to invest in U.S. property. Subpart F applies only to U.S. shareholders of controlled foreign corporations. This means U.S. persons who own 10% or more of the voting power of a foreign corporation, which is more than 50% owned by voter value by such 10% owners. Attribution rules apply to determine whether the percentage of ownership test is met. So, U.S. persons, whether individual or corporation, who own shares in a CFC have to include in their income their pro rata share of the CFC's subpart F net income, as well as their pro rata share of the CFC's investment in U.S. property. This is treated a lot like a dividend, except it's not a qualified dividend eligible for reduced tax rates for individuals. Here's an example. Jane is a U.S. citizen who owns 60% of a Cayman corporation that owns a beachfront rental villa. The rent income of the villa, net of expenses, is subpart F income. If the net profits of the corporation for 2014 are $10,000, then Jane must include $6,000 in her taxable income in 2014, even if there's no dividend. Dividends are not again taxable if they're paid from subpart F income, which comes first. So Jane doesn't have to pay tax a second time when the Cayman Corporation pays her a dividend. Not all of the income of a CFC must be included. Subpart F applies only to those kinds of income that can be easily shifted. Here are the kinds of income involved. Foreign personal holding company income is passive income. The definition of passive income we discussed earlier and the exceptions are actually in subpart F. Subpart F income also includes profits from buying goods from a related party and selling them to anyone, or buying goods from anyone and selling them to a related party, where the goods are both made in and for use in a country other than the CFC's country of incorporation. Whew, that's a hard one to get out. Um, so this is aimed at wholesale outfits that just buy and sell goods they didn't make themselves, like what the Japanese call trading companies. Subpart F income also includes income from performing services outside the CFC's country of incorporation, but only if these services are performed for or on behalf of a related party. There's a common theme here for both types of income. There must have been a related party involved in the process and the activities producing the income must have been outside the CFC's country of incorporation. The idea of subpart F was to end artificial deferral without interfering with legitimate business. Having a CFC insure U.S. risks or conduct any U.S. business has lots of problems, not just with subpart F and not just with tax. Also, there are some complex rules on banks and insurance. We won't discuss these. In addition to including current income, U.S. shareholders of a CFC must include in their income the amount of the CFC's earnings invested in U.S. property. U.S. property doesn't include bank accounts or investments in stocks or bonds, 
of unrelated parties, but it does include any loans or advances to related parties. Special coordination rules apply so that this provision comes before the current income provisions.